Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a rational equation with complex numbers. So z is a complex number, we have z minus i divided by z plus i and that's equal to z over z minus i. So we're going to try to find the complex number that satisfies this type of equation. And I'll be presenting two methods. But let me tell you, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a playlist as well as a bunch of other problems that are at different levels. At least one thing you should always know about complex numbers is the fact that i squared equals negative 1. So i is the imaginary unit and it's basically defined as follows, i squared equals negative 1. Or you can think of it as one of the numbers or one of the square roots of negative 1. Make sense? I say one of the square roots because negative 1 has two square roots. Think about the other one. Great. So let's go ahead and start with the first method. So what is the name of this channel? I hope you do know. It's called Z, not Z, but it's called A plus BI. So I try to use A plus BI in problems, which is kind of fun. Anyways, that's the whole idea. Since Z is a complex number, we're going to replace Z with A plus BI, where A and B are real numbers. That's the definition of a complex number. And now we're going to plug it in. So what is Z minus I? You just need to subtract I from this. That'll give you the imaginary part being changed to B minus 1. And if you add I to both sides, you'll get A plus BI plus 1I. And that'll be written as A plus B plus 1I. So now we can go ahead and plug these expressions into our equation and simplify the whole thing. Okay? Let's see how this plays out. Z minus I is going to be A plus the quantity B minus 1I. And that will be divided by Z plus I, which is the same thing with a plus sign inside the parentheses. And that is equal to Z, which is A plus BI, divided by Z minus BI, which is the numerator on the left-hand side. Okay, so far so good. Are you following? Now, our goal is to solve for A and B. A complex number has two components, a real part and an imaginary part. This is called the real part. This is called the imaginary part. Be careful because the imaginary part does not include I. Okay? And A and B are always real numbers. So even the imaginary part is a real number. So let's go ahead and simplify this by cross multiplying. So we're going to go ahead and multiply like this and multiply like that. So if I go ahead and multiply this by itself, it's actually going to be squared. And this one is just going to be distributed. So let's go ahead and write it as a product first. Let's use brackets. So it's less confusing because we have parentheses already in our equation. Now, we're going to go ahead and distribute. Uh, to distribute the square, we're going to use the formula for x plus y squared. It's going to be x squared plus y squared, but i squared is just going to bring a minus sign, and then plus 2a multiplied by b and minus 1 multiplied by i. That'll be our imaginary part. And on the right-hand side, we have a times a, which is a squared, and then a is distributed over the bi, which is abi. And then this is distributed over the A, which is AB plus A multiplied by I. And finally, I squared is going to give us negative 1. So we kind of have to write this as minus B times B plus 1. Let me go ahead and move this stuff to the left so it doesn't cut off. Sometimes when I edit these videos, you know, stuff will be cut off. So I want to make sure that it's the right way. Okay, here we go. So now in this expression, we're going to go ahead and simplify things. First of all, a squared cancels out. And then what else? Let's see. I do have a minus b minus 1 squared. And then here I can kind of write this as 2ab minus 2a multiplied by i. And then on the right hand side I have the ab and ab plus a. So it's going to give me 2ab plus a multiplied by i. And then finally minus b squared plus b. But I can still write it as a product. Great. Now here's what we're going to compare. We're going to compare the real parts and the imaginary parts. The real parts are here, these two. So let's go ahead and compare them. I have a minus sign in front of a perfect square, so I have to be very careful. Think about b minus 1 squared and just negate it. Minus b squared plus 2b minus 1. You got that? That should equal minus b squared minus b. Notice that minus b squared cancels out. 
we got 3b, 2b or not to be, I forgot to say that, equals 1, and from here b equals 1 third. Awesome. That's the b value. How do I find the a value? Easy. You can just compare the imaginary parts. But notice that when you compare them, 2ab cancels out, which is nice, and we end up with negative 2a equals a. So when you get an equation like this, do you just cancel out the a's and say, hey, negative 2 equals 1? No, because that's not true. Here's what you're supposed to do instead. Put everything on the same side. So add 2a, you'll get 3a equals 0, which means a equals 0. That is the right way to do it. So we got the values of a and b. What is that supposed to mean? It means now we can go ahead and write our complex number. And remember the name of this channel. I mean, how do you write a complex number? a plus bi. So since a is 0, this is going to be like 0 plus 1 over 3 multiplied by i. But you can totally ignore the 0 and just write the z as 1 over 3 multiplied by i. So that will be the only solution to this equation. Obviously, you're more than welcome to go ahead and substitute and check it out and see if that works. Now, could we have guessed that the answer would be like some number, some real number multiplied by i? Probably, because if you look at the equation carefully, it is possible because of the subtraction and addition of i all over the place. So we could, we could have guessed that. So we could say something like, hey, I want z to be bi. I'm already going to assume a equal to 0. But in case there are solutions with a does not equal a not being 0, then you would miss those. That's why it's safer to use z equals a plus pi most of the time. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method now and see how it differs from the first. Again, I'm going to write the original problem. z minus i divided by z plus i is equal to z over z minus i. What am I going to do with for my second method? I don't need to replace z with a plus b i. I'm just going to multiply. So this is going to be z minus i squared equals z plus i multiplied by z. Let's go ahead and distribute. If you expand the second power, it's going to be z squared plus i squared, which is minus 1, minus 2iz. On the right-hand side, when you distribute, you're going to get z squared plus iz. And now we can kind of simplify z squared, which makes this a linear equation, which makes it a lot easier to solve. Bring the negative 2iz here, make it 3iz. Great. Let's go ahead and bring it and make it 3iz, and we're going to have negative 1 on the left. Uh-oh, we're getting a negative answer. Let's find out. So to solve for z, I'm supposed to divide both sides by 3i. Let's go ahead and do it. And when you divide, this is going to be z. But this needs to be simplified. A lot of times people are going to multiply by i, but I'm going to multiply by negative i. And this is going to give me 1. Make sense? And now this is going to be i over 3. Uh-oh, we got the same answer as the first one. Wow, that was easy, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.